All righty. So, say, so, sorry I ran in a little late, but we'll get started now, and we're going to continue our discussion of quadratics, and we are now going to discuss finding vertices. And I'm not sure if I've used that word before, so let's make sure we're all on the same page with this. A vertex, vertices, is the plural of a vertex. And the vertex of a parabola is either its maximum value, if it's opening downwards, or its minimum value, if it's opening upwards. And remember, when we have this quadratic function, ax squared plus bx plus c, it's this number a that's controlling the shape of the graph, and it's therefore this number a that is controlling whether the vertex is a maximum or a minimum. I've always found it vaguely unintuitive, but if A is positive, the vertex represents a minimum. If A is negative, the vertex represents a maximum. So, that's what a vertex is. And the question then becomes, well, I guess there are sort of two questions. How do you find a vertex? And the question we always at least try to address in this course what good is finding a vertex? And I guess we should just come right out and address the elephant in the room here, which is that we already know how to find vertices as just an exercise in calculator technology. I mean, a vertex is a maximum or a minimum, and we learned how to find maximum and minimum values of any functions on our calculator. So certainly we can find maximum and minimum values of quadratics using the max and min feature. On the other hand, a lot of students seemed not to like that, uh, that section of the textbook and not to like using the max and min features. So maybe there's a better way. We'll address this question first. And whether you think this is a better or a worse way than just using technology, there certainly is a different way using the vertex formula. And the vertex formula says, okay, you have this function ax squared 
fuss be x fussy you want to know where the vertex occurs well sort of like the quadratic form to the but much less ugly looking there's a plug and play form to the you can use The vertex occurs at x equals negative b divided by 2a. What about y? After all, a vertex is a point, right? And a point has an x and a y coordinate. Well, to find y, you just plug this x into the form of the. And if anything about that is unclear, it can probably be clarified via an exam. F of x equals 3x squared minus 4x plus 1. Let's find the vertex and let's ask. Is this vertex a maximum or a minimum? And let's do the second question first, because this doesn't require any computation. Is this vertex a max or a min? Max. Maximum. I've heard maximum. maximum. And I heard minimum, so both uh, possible answers. Remember that the answer to this question is controlled by that number in front of the x squared. It's controlled by a. And in particular, it's controlled by whether A is positive or negative. So 3 is a positive number. The vertex is a minimum. And we can answer that question without performing any arithmetic or really doing any math at all other than looking at the sign of A. As for finding the vertex, it's now plug and play with A, B, and C. Actually, for the X coordinate, just A and B, no C in that equation. So negative, negative four divided by two times three. These two negative signs are going to cancel each other out and give us positive four sixths, which we can then simplify as two thirds. And we have used the vertex formed a law, but we haven't actually found the vertex because once again, a vertex is two points. It's X and Y, and we have not found X and Y. 
we have found x. Well, finding y is also bug and fay. It's a bit more tedious than finding x, maybe. But once you've found x, you just stick it into the formula. So 3 times 2 thirds squared minus 4 times 2 thirds plus 1 equals. And now the reason I said it's maybe a little more tedious than finding the vertex, these things always are kind of slow, plugging them into our calculator. Let me quickly jot this down on the whiteboard. Get that calculator up, and now we just try to enter it without making any errors. Was that? Yep, that's. Sorry, I suddenly had an idea that that three was a two, but it isn't. Three times two. Thirds squared minus four times two thirds plus one. So, admittedly, hardly the end of the world, just a few more button presses than the x value. By the way, we probably recognize this as negative one-third, but if we ever get an ugly decimal and we want it as a fraction, we can go to math frac and have our calculator do that for us. And the reason I do that is that one ordinarily wouldn't mix fractions and decimals. So if our x value was written as a negative one-third, if our x value is written as a fraction, our y value should probably also be written as a fraction. And in a sense, that's all there is. Um, but there is a question can we find an application of this? And of course, the examples you get in these classes tend to be a little banal, but it's certainly easy enough to write down a word problem. Something like an object is launched upwards. its height after t seconds is h of t equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 12 of t plus 1 
meters. That's that's a realistic equation. We're negle well, we're neglecting air resistance, but otherwise it's realistic. And we can ask, what is the object's maximum height? And a question like this is now, well, I won't say straightforward, if we know what we're doing and we use the right formula. This question is now pretty straightforward. Those are maybe some big ifs, though. Um, the number one mistake students make with this material is just using the wrong form to the because we now have these two formulas involving quadratics, right? And I mean, if you see a quadratic, it's a safe bet you're supposed to be using one of these formulas, but people don't always find it obvious which formula to use. So that's sort of try to answer that before we come back to this example. With the quadratic formula, we're trying to find when y, your height or your gas mileage or whatever equals some specific number. Sometimes this number is explicitly given to you. When is the object five meters above the ground? Well, you want to set y equal to five. Other times it's a little more hidden. When will the object hit the ground? There are no numbers in that question, but you're really asking when the height is zero. For the vertex, you're looking for a maximum or a minimum value. And that's precisely what we have here. We're not asking when will the height equal some value. We're asking when will the height be at its maximum. And that's when you use the vertex form. So Let me copy this over, plus 12t plus 1. And let's hit it with the vertex formula. Once you've decided which formula to use, these problems are very plug and play. We need A and we need B and we plug those in. <coughs> Negative 12 over <coughs> 2 times negative 4.9 equals, it's easy to make a mistake here, you've got these two negative signs.
times, they'll cancel each other out. So we're going to get a positive number, 12 divided by, if we do this multiplication, it's negative 9.8, but the negative signs cancel. And then 12 divided by 9.8, let's just do that very quickly on the calculator, 1.22. And now we have to step back and we ask ourselves, okay, have we actually answered the question? 1.22 is a value of time. So that's 1.22 seconds. What are we asked for, we're asked for the object's maximum height. Well, 1.22 seconds is not a height, so we're not done yet. We now need to use this formula. We'll plug 1.22 in and we'll get the height back again. And again, let me just jot this down on the whiteboard for when I go to our calculator and zoom disappears. So negative 4.9 times 1.22 squared plus 12 times 1.22 plus 1. There, 8.35. And this is a height, 8.35 meters. <coughs> Any questions before you get the classwork? So the classwork which is hopefully printed and which I'm going to have to run and get, is kind of a just quadratic functions assignment. So there's some quadratic form to the stuff. There's some vertex form to the stuff. You'll use whichever form to the is appropriate. 